In this video, I'm gonna talk about what it means to be a hybrid shooter. I'm gonna talk about the gear I use, the benefits of being a hybrid shooter, but also the difficulties I face as well. So what is a hybrid shooter? Well, essentially it's someone that shoots both photography and video. To give you a bit of background, I started my photography career about eight years ago. That's when I took on my first paid work after just shooting um, as a hobby for a couple of years before that. I went from being a hobbyist landscape photographer to being a um, commercial lifestyle photographer. I shot weddings, I shot products, and I worked in and managed a professional studio. About five years ago, I read about the importance of having an and a photographer and and it wasn't immediately obvious what my and should be. Being just a photographer in a professional sense just wasn't enough anymore. I needed to be a photographer and fill in the blank. I don't remember it being obvious at the time, but video creator, filmmaker, videographer, I really hate that word, but it has obvious ties to photography. So there it was, photographer and filmmaker. Um, only problem was I knew nothing about filmmaking and I'm still on that journey of learning filmmaking today. Whilst there are a lot of transferable skills between photography and video creation, there's a lot of differences as well and there's actually so much to get your head around once you start and I think that was one of the biggest difficulties I faced early on. Editing is a lot harder and more time consuming, sound needs much more attention paying to it, exposure needs much more attention to it. If, if I underexpose a shot in photography by a couple of stops i can easily recover that no one will ever know but if i do that in video that will stand out to anyone the margin for error in filmmaking and video creation is tiny to make my life as a hybrid shooter as easy as possible i needed gear that i could rely on to capably shoot both video and photo I've used a number of different systems over the years, but a couple of years ago, I settled on Sony. I thought their mirrorless kit was way ahead of anything else that was out there at the time. Their lenses were fantastic quality as well, and I just thought Sony offered me the best options, and I'm still shooting Sony today. I'm not gonna go into the specifics in this video of the exact kit I use. Um, I've got two Sony cameras, and I've got a collection of lenses, and. I've got two cameras because one is more suited to video and one is more suited to stills, but I can use both cameras for both purposes. The lenses are great, they're interchangeable between the two cameras. It just works so well for what I need and sits into my workflow brilliantly. If you're just starting out, I'd seriously recommend the Sony ecosystem. Whatever you opt for, just make sure that you enjoy using it and it has the features that you expect from a hybrid system. And thankfully, it's not just camera manufacturers that have got hybrid shooters in mind. Adobe have absolutely covered all bases with their Creative Cloud software package, which I use to edit all of my photos, all of my videos on. I used to use their photography package, which was Photoshop and Lightroom, but since I started doing video content, I, I upgraded. I actually upgraded to the full package, um, which just makes sense from a price point of view. You're getting so many more programs for that fee than you are from just adding Premiere, which is the video editing suite I use. So there are a lot of packages in there that I never touch, like InDesign and Illustrator, for example. But when you get the full package, it's not just Premiere, you get After Effects, which is Adobe's visual effects software, which I use for motion tracking, for stabilization, for green screen, and for various other things like uh, animations and stuff. There's also Audition, which is a really good audio piece of software. I've only really used that to remix tracks to make them shorter or longer to fit the length of the videos I produce. Um, but again, it, it's a great extra feature. I know it's expensive and I think I got a Black Friday deal so there are deals to be had and every year when I renew I threaten to cancel and they give me the deal at the same price so I think I pay about £32 a month if you look on the website it's probably more like 40 something pounds a month but you can get it cheaper so I would probably advise contacting them and seeing if they could do a deal for you I don't know if that works but give it a shot um, but Although it's an expensive monthly fee, I have more than recouped that in time back because of the speed I can edit things out in their system. And just being able to edit what I do on the Creative Cloud is um, a really good investment because it means I can produce the best quality work for my clients. If you don't want to go down the subscription route, there are other options. DaVinci Resolve is an excellent but hard to get your head around package from Blackmagic. That's actually a free video editing piece of software if you've got the time to put into learning it. Capture One, you can buy a standout license for or go subscription. That is a really good photo editing package and one I keep meaning to try out a little bit more. 
and um, if you're an Apple user, Final Cut Pro is really well regarded for video editing as well. So what do I find the main benefits of being a hybrid shooter to be? Well, from a professional work point of view, I can pitch for jobs doing either photography or filmmaking. I've done both for my clients over the last 12 months and having both to offer is a really good value add. Like I said before, I believe everyone, creatives especially, need a supplementary skill in this day and age. Being able to shoot a few high quality stills on a day of filmmaking is a really good way to kind of surprise and delight your clients. It goes above and beyond what's expected sometimes and that's only going to lead to further work and more referrals as well. Being able to offer these extra services to your clients is a really strong advantage. There's also a lot of jobs that have been out there where I've got an initial job as either a filmmaker or a photographer and then as I've got talking to client as our relationships developed I've been able to push my additional skills onto them and I've got further jobs from them in the thing that I didn't initially get hired for. Quite often, um, a lot of people have a separate photographer and a separate video creator. And if you can fulfill that role for, for both of those positions, that's only gonna make your client's life easier. The less freelancers they have to deal with, the better. And if, if you can build up the trust with them in one of those fields, then it's just gonna lead to work in the other one as well. Like I mentioned earlier as well, there's a lot of transferable skills between photo and video. And given that the learnings are quite complementary to each other, learning video once you know photography is a bit easier. I assume it's the same coming the other way if you come from a video background to photography, but can't be sure. Anyone that's gone from video to photography, give us a shout in the comments. Let me know how your journey was and how, how simple you found it. So the other main benefit is the additional value you can get from your kit. You've invested so much money in this kit, in these lenses, in these cameras, and just having them there for that single use you know you're just not getting the most out of them if you can use them for something else and bring in money through a different field so if you've got a load of photo kit that you can make high quality films on you don't need to spend much more money yeah you might need to buy a cheap microphone and a couple of cheap lights or something but being able to create video content with stuff you already own it's, it's to me it's just a no-brainer because you are not maximizing the value of the kit it'll just make that return on investment come a lot quicker but whilst there are some benefits there are a lot of difficulties as well and one of them is definitely switching between photo and video this has become easier in recent times as camera manufacturers have put memory buttons on the back of cameras so you can easily use those memory functions to switch from your video mode to your photo mode and, and it is becoming easier. The problem is if you're trying to do both at the same time and you're just constantly switching between the two modes, it kind of goes back to a saved mode. So if you change the settings, you won't automatically go back to those settings. So you've really got to have your, your brain switched on if you're doing that, because if you haven't stored the white balance in your settings and you change to photo, run off a few shots in auto white balance, then go back to video mode, it might be set to the wrong white balance. That could really make a mess of your video work. So it is quite difficult to switch between the two sort of on the fly like that. And I think it's also very difficult to switch your brain between the two as well. This is probably completely wrong, but I think you do use a slightly different part of your brain when you're doing video and photo. And this is kind of hard to explain. I feel like I think very differently when I'm filming to when I'm taking photos. I'm not sure what it is, but sometimes it seems very tricky to go from one to the other. I guess it's something to do with capturing a moment versus capturing an ongoing moment. There's just a lot less margin for error in video than there is in photography. Being able to manage client expectation is another potential difficulty. Whilst it's great to be able to offer both, as I mentioned earlier, if you're the sole creative on a shoot, you cannot do both. You can do both, but you're only gonna make your life very difficult. <laughs> If you are trying to shoot both, I don't believe you can be the best, you, that most elite level at both photography and video. Only a very, very few amount of people can reach that pinnacle in both photography and video. And if you are trying to do both on the same shoot, that only amplifies it. Concentrate on video or concentrate on photography. Try and do both and I think both will suffer. I don't think you'll get the best photos. I don't think you'll make the best video. And that can only lead one way and that's to potential client disappointment and that is the last thing you want so just be clear to the client this is a photo shoot or this is a video shoot if they want the other one as well schedule it in for a separate day or hire someone else bring someone else in to cover the element that you're not covering 
unless you've got four hands and three eyes, you're just going to make yourself really stressed on the day, no matter how tempting it is. That kind of leads on to the outside perception as well. Um, if you're offering your services as both, you probably won't be seen as a specialist in one or the other. And there's still a bit of a train of thought out there that the, the top brands will only hire specialists. So you might be limiting the work you can do in future. Now, I don't know how much this happens still in this day and age. As an example, I know that Peter McKinnon shoots video and photo and he's just been hired to do hind eyes christmas shoot so it's not doing him any harm moving forward i'm going to continue to offer my services both in video and photography because i enjoy doing both and i enjoy switching from from one to the other i enjoy the variety um, over the last year i've probably marketed myself more as a video creator and i've shot more video than i do photo and that'll probably be the way going forward if i had to pick one i'd probably pick video i've, I've done more video over the last year and i probably see myself now as a better filmmaker than i do photographer um, and i think that is the way that my career will continue to progress I'd also, part of me really wants to take photography back to just being a hobby. There is, is nothing quite like doing something you love for money to kill your hobbies. As soon as I started shooting photography, like weddings and stuff like that, I just didn't want to go out with my camera and, and shoot for the fun of it anymore. And I do definitely miss that. So I hope that's been useful to anyone that's looking to go from photography to video or video to photography, or anyone that's a relatively new creative looking to, to try to hand at both. There's so much to discuss on this topic. So please go into the comments below, post any questions, any tips, anything like that. Please like this video, please subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, that would be a massive help to me. And until next time,